We reject the ideology of globalism, and we embrace the doctrine of patriotism. Not only will this tax plan pay for itself, but it will pay down debt. There are moral and legal obligation questions that I think we'll have to wrestle with as a society. When we as people go wobbly on the truth, we go wobbly on America. All you have to do is look at the numbers, look at what we've done. And this is only the beginning. From 100.9 FM WXIR, this is Evidence of Design, and I'm your host, Jason Taylor. Evidence of Design is a live talk show about the political economy. We critique income and wealth inequality and support democratic values. Thank you for listening, and welcome. Yes, indeed. Good morning, Rochester. You are listening to 100.9 FM WXIR here in Rochester, New York. My name is Jason Taylor, and I am your host of Evidence of Design. I am also joined today by my good friend and co-host, Matt Treadwell. Hello. And also returning guest and nascent, basically official new co-host, Mary Lawrence. Good morning. On Evidence of design, we talk about income and wealth inequality. We critique the inequality that we see in modern America, particularly economic inequality. We wonder where economic inequality comes from and what can we do about it. We think that there's not enough attention given to income and wealth inequality, in addition to poverty, in addition to the concentration of wealth. And on this show, we talk about what that's, what's that all about? What is income and wealth inequality all about and why it's important? On today's show, on the 33rd show today, you can participate in a number of ways. You can call in at 585-219-8889. You can tweet us at Evidence Design Zero, and you can email us at evidenceofdesign101 at gmail.com. What are we talking about, though, before you participate? We are talking about Amazon's HQ2. Matt, we won. New York won. Did we win? We won, man. We got Amazon's second headquarters. New York City won. I think oh. Rochester was up for consideration at one point, wasn't it? Yeah, Bob Duffy, the uh, Rochester Chamber or the Business Chamber of Commerce, they submitted a proposal. Rochester didn't win, <laughs> but we won. New York, hooray! Oh boy, that's right. Not just New York. What do you mean? DC as well. Oh no. Virginia. What's the co- what's the town called? Oh no. Arlington. Arlington. Yeah. And also Tennessee. So you're saying that HQ2 is actually... Sounds like like HQ... 2A? Several? <laughs> 2B. <B. laughs> Sounds like H1N1 to me. <laughs> it is a new version of the flu, Amazon. Okay, yeah. so... Yeah, so all jokes aside, Amazon had released a request for proposal last year. And basically Amazon was saying, look, we're doing really well. We want to create a new headquarters somewhere. Wine and Dinus states... That's right, states. So they went to all the states and with their RFP, their request for proposal, and they received more than 230 proposals from different states, municipalities, localities around the country, including Rochester, including a bunch of other cities. Long story short, this Tuesday of this week, it was revealed that not just one city was awarded the second headquarters, but it came out that Long Island City in New York City in Queens is receiving another headquarters, also Arlington, Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C., and uh, in Tennessee, a spot in Tennessee is getting a a small sort of factory for 5,000 jobs is being created there. So, congratulations, New Yorkers. We did it. Let's talk about what this means here uh, on Evidence of Design today with the new headquarters proposed by Amazon and what Amazon's all about. We definitely want to hear from you today. Give us a call. Do you know? Do you participate in Amazon? Do you buy and sell on Amazon? Do you care? Does anyone care? Like, why should we care about the concentration of... I feel like the crossover between the number of people who do that and the number of people who listen to that show is probably at least in the double digits. At least. <laughs> <laughs> at least. So, listeners, let's take it away. Is closed. 
Just couldn't get ahead by who? The fall. You're right. Yes, just couldn't get ahead by the fall right there. Thanks for tuning in to Evidence of Design here at 100.9 FM WXIR. Listeners, we are talking today about Amazon, not the rainforest, but the multinational mega corporation that just announced the winners of its second headquarters request or proposal. This is a, one of the world's largest corporations. Take a listen to some of the things that Amazon does. So, Mary or Matt, on the top of your head, what is Amazon known for? Shipping. Shipping. Online shopping. Right. Online retailer. Amazon is the nation's largest online retailer in e-commerce. So that is probably what everyone thinks of when they think of Amazon is the e-commerce site. Amazon now controls 50% of all e- e-commerce I think that means that of all of the purchases that happen online, 50% of them occur through Amazon. That's a, that's a big number. That is a pretty big number. E-commerce with Amazon. So in order to ship all of those goods, of course, they also have warehouses. They have delivery stations. They have shipping stations. And so, yeah, Amazon moves a lot of goods around the country. They also, of course, though, have Amazon Prime. That is their special subscription service. They just raised the price. It costs $119 a year now. And if you subscribe to Amazon Prime, you get free two-day shipping. Think about that. Anywhere in this nation, if you buy a good through Amazon, you are guaranteed free two-day shipping. Think about the logistics that's required to make that happen. So free two-day shipping. You also get access to special movies and music. So Amazon has their own uh, streaming services similar to Netflix. And it's reported that 63% of Amazon users subscribe to Amazon Prime. So 63% of all Amazon users are paying Amazon $119 a year. And how many users are that, though, of 63% of Amazon users? Well, more than 50% of American households are known to subscribe to Amazon Prime. So over half of America subscribe to Prime. Mary, I think that... That is more than the amount of people who vote in this country. I was just about to say that, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagine if all of those people had voted. So 63% of (laughs) Amazon users subscribe to Prime, and we struggle Uh in voting to get uh, more than 50% of people to vote. They subscribe to Prime when they should really be subscribing to democracy. That is a new... (laughs) That's Amazon's new (laughs) uh, slogan. What is their slogan, anyways? Democracy is free, too. Something about, like... 119 a month. (laughs) Relentlessness or <laughs> vigor, uh, <laughs> obsession. <laughs> they have a slogan. I, they must. <laughs> they have to have something. <laughs> so it's Amazon's the largest e-commerce uh, retailer. They have their subscription service. They also, most people don't know about this, is that Amazon has a substantial presence in the cloud computing and web services division. So web services are like all that stuff that happens behind the scenes on the internet. Over. of the world's cloud computing services are provided by Amazon. Microsoft, IBM, and Google, have you heard of those companies? They combined provide 24% of the world's web services. Amazon delivers 34% of the world's cloud computing services by itself. They contract with the CIA, with the Pentagon. They are uh, in the U.S. government and the military and uh, security services as well. But... What about some other things? Amazon also has Echo and Alexa, those voice assistants that you have. You say, uh, hey, Alexa, turn my living room lights to pink or whatever, and the <laughs> living room lights turn to pink. <laughs> hey, Alexa, I need batteries. Just order them from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing that your credit card is already synced up. All you have to do is say order, and it will be there within free two-day shipping. <laughs> if you have Prime. That's right, and it will remind you to get Prime, trust me. <laughs> I didn't realize this, but Amazon owns Twitch. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Uh, Twitch is the game streaming? The largest video game streaming website in the world. 
Hmm. They purchased it back in 2014 or 2013, I believe. Wow. Yeah. They also apparently own Whole Foods. Yes. Which I yes, they uh, do. learned recently. They also own the Washington Post. Yes. I just learned that now. <laughs> <laughs> they also they also own Blue Origin Space Company, which is trying to get people to Mars. Okay, so what do they not own? <laughs> Let's they go also there. marry. <laughs> no, we're not done yet. Hold on. <laughs> they also. This would uh, have been a great opportunity for a quiz show. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been. They also own Kindle, of course. Amazon Kindle, which is the the eBooks. Kindle Fire. Yeah. Amazon Fire TV. Amazon. Googleplex. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> they also, but you don't know. <laughs> yeah, How do you know? <laughs> who knows? They also uh, own Zappos, which is the, the, the shoe store, the online mm-hmm. shoe store retailer. And they, they also, Amazon has a lot of big R&D, research and development department. They are piloting right now brick-and-mortar stores. They're piloting brick-and-mortar stores that there's no employees in them. So customers would walk in, and you would pick up a product, and there'd be robots or cameras or whatever, and you would just walk out of the store, and your your credit card would automatically be charged because you have like an e wallet. So they're piloting brick and mortar stores with no humans in them, uh, which of course would destroy jobs. But then you'd have to have people who build the robots to staff the store. So you know you can you can argue that, but there's some research and development there, and they're also this was in the news about a year ago. There are research and development on Amazon Prime Air, which are trying to do deli- delivering packages via drone. So maybe 20 years from now, 20 years from now, we'll have a bunch of drones flying around, dropping off your your free 30-second uh, shipping from <laughs> toothpaste order from Amazon. So Amazon's pretty big. How big, Jason? They are well, one of the most successful companies in America. Jeff Bezos, the CEO, is worth more than 100 billion dollars. It goes up and down because a lot of that is stock market assessed. So he was right. worth 160 billion a few months ago. Mm. So long story short, Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the history of the world, is worth more than $100 billion. He makes more than $191,000 a minute. T- take that in, more than $191,000 in a minute. The median employee salary who works at Amazon is $28,000. That's lower than the uh, average household income in the United States. That's per year. Yep, that's per year. Not per minute. Not per minute. <laughs> and so it takes Am- it takes Jeff Bezos 10 seconds to make more than what one of the, than the average employee of his makes in an entire year. Amazon's big, Matt. He must be really smart. <laughs> <laughs> and hardworking. Yeah. Yeah. So, listeners, uh, we were talking today about Amazon and what that all means. We gave a little bit of background, kind of jokingly, about what, what Amazon's all about, what they do. What are the effects of the new HQ2 proposal. You are tuned in, and thank you, by the way, to 100.9 FM WXIR in Rochester, New York. We want to hear from you throughout the show, and you can participate via 585-288. That is the wrong number. (laughs) Misinformation. (laughs) 585-219. 8889. I was about to give you a, <laughs> my own number. <laughs> Which you're, you're welcome to contact I mean, I guess me. that would also work. They just wouldn't be on air. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So 585-219-8889. Mary, Matt, what do you think about all of this development with Amazon? I think it actually brings us back to our topic of last week about jobs um, mm. and kind of the... I mean, we were talking about different partisan views of what cre- job creation is or, or who might bring it in. Um, but I think it brings us more to the question of, like, what does job creation mean and what kind of jobs are worth creating and worth destroying? Um, and I think what we're looking at with this is, like, you know, uh, local politicians for the... Uh, such as, as Governor Cuomo, who are you know, excited to have Amazon come into New York um, are talking about how many jobs are going to be created and how good it's going to be for the economy without really looking at what kind of jobs those are going to be. Like, are these jobs that people are going to be able to live on? Probably not. If they're living in New York on $28,000 a year, they're probably going to be struggling um, if they have, you know, families or whatever. So, um, yeah, I think we have to think about what kind of jobs um, we want to have and and whether Amazon is actually going to provide those. So let's hear from Andrew Cuomo. He came out with a statement, uh, of course, with Mayor Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York City, and both of those guys are pretty ecstatic about having Amazon come 
Here, let's take a listen They're to positively chuffed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could also we could already start calling him Amazon Cuomo. You know, I yes. think that was. <laughs> yes, uh, Cuomo. For those who don't know, Cuomo jokingly said that he would change his name to Amazon Cuomo should Amazon pick New York State for uh, their second headquarters, because. We, as we mentioned, the headquarters is being split between multiple municipalities. Mm-hmm. Perhaps Cuomo will just change, like, it'll be like Emma, Emma Cuomo, or like Zon Cuomo, or something like that. Maybe oh my gosh, Zon Cuomo? <laughs> that That's really a cool. really awesome name. Zon <laughs> Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's listen to what Andrew Cuomo had to say at a, at a news conference after the announcements that Long Island City in New York City was chosen as one of Amazon's second headquarters. This is a big money maker for us costs us nothing, nada, niente, goose. We make money doing this. Uh, And to get Amazon here, did we have to win the competition? Yes, we had to win the competition. Um, Amazon in some ways, uh, and I've said that to some of you before, Amazon just memorialized what was going on already. Nada, niente, goose, egg. Amazon will cost us nothing. Matt, what was he talking about there, though, when he's saying uh, Amazon memorialized a process that, like, what is Cuomo talking about? And why is he saying that bringing Amazon into New York State will cost us nothing? What does he mean? Why would bringing a company into the state cost us something? I think the idea is that with Amazon setting up a headquarters in uh, New York State, the uh, the sort of idea that both de Blasio and Cuomo have floated is that it will also encourage other tech giants to set up shop in New York City as well. And that the whole, I guess, this is just a starting point for growth and the, I guess, creation of new jobs. Yeah, but why cost? Like, wh- why would there be a cost involved to bring a company in somewhere? Well... Don't companies bring us money? Right. Um, part of the, I guess... Uh, whole uh, process of this looking for a new place for headquarters was that states and municipalities were offering Amazon a lot in the way of like tax breaks, for example, for coming to cities. And I believe we don't know all the details right now, but the, I think the number has been like $3 billion in tax cuts that New York City is going to be giving to Amazon in order to set up shop. And there's a, there's a special word for that. Corporate welfare. And uh, we'll go ahead and define this. This is just the the definition right from Wikipedia so that um, everyone knows where you can find it. Amazon. No, I'm just kidding. Amazon (laughs) on Wikipedia. (laughs) No. Um, But corporate welfare is a term that analogizes corporate subsidies to welfare payments for the poor. So it's um, sort of making a parallel between people who need help, and corporations. Um, The term is often used to describe a government's bestowal of money grants, tax breaks, uh, or other special favorable treatments for corporations. Right, so social welfare is the idea that we have to support people who aren't making it in the capitalist system. For whatever reason, welfare supports people who, for whatever reason, the system is not allowing them to thrive. Corporate welfare is just the idea that we are using our collective public institutions to support corporations, private corporations, for them to survive. So it's giving money to corporations. And this is not new at all. Like Corporate welfare has been debated for decades, and it's under a lot of critique because the idea is why would you give companies money for them to do business? Like The whole point of companies is that they give us money in doing their business, so to speak. And goods. <laughs> and you know, goods. I mean, like they goods provide and goods and services, yeah. Yeah, that's the whole point of capitalism, right? And so uh, what Cuomo was alluding to there, I think, is that when he's talking about Amazon memorialized a process, this happens all the time behind the scenes, and the news talks about it. But any time a large corporation tries to build a new place, a new warehouse, a new office, et cetera, they will probably write like requests for proposals and go through the state's economic development agencies. And so all the time... Uh, happening right now, there are corporations who want to, let's say, offer to build in New York. And New York State, the government of New York that we pay taxes to, will say to those companies, well, yeah, absolutely, come on into New York and we'll give you these incentives to come here. We will lower the taxes on the property that you own. We'll give you special grants. We'll we'll change the name of our governor to the name of your company. (laughs) You know, (laughs) different incentives like that. 
the I think the idea behind why this even happens originally at least is because um, to, to the idea is to help and support new businesses, startups. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a lot of money and you have to start paying taxes within your first year of business, it can be very difficult to sustain not just a profit but just to just remain in business. But what we're seeing here is sort of an evolution of that idea where in a business that is already extremely profitable, <laughs> uh, obscenely uh, wealthy, is being offered tax breaks that it simply doesn't need. And, and in many have speculated that even if Amazon wasn't given these tax breaks, they still would have set up shop in New York City. Um, so we were reading an article earlier, um, an interview with Stacy Mitchell, who uh, does a lot of research on big box stores, including Walmart and and now on Amazon. And uh, one thing that was mentioned in this article in talking about these tax breaks was, um, you know, Cuomo mentioned this competition that New York had to quote unquote win um, to get Amazon to come. And, you know, there were dozens of cities that were up in the running and um she talked a little bit about what they were offering and there was one thing that really shocked me that was a few places have offered to give all state and local income taxes paid by amazon employees back to amazon um what yeah uh so that was really jarring to read because it it's uh I mean, arguably, is that are you even paying a state or local tax if your tax is not going to the locality or the state? Right, it's just You're a, paying a tax money. to your employer mm-hmm. to work who does not mm-hmm. pay you enough to live. <laughs> like that, um, I, I think my reaction is that sounds a little bit like feudalism, um, where you you can't get out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that makes no sense to me. And let's break that down again, even though it's you, you did it very well, Mary. If you offer a company to give the company the state and local taxes that it's paying, so if you're the government and the company is paying state and local taxes, doing business in your government, in the territory by which you govern, and you give that company the state and local taxes that they owe the government, then you are giving the company the tax dollars that its employees are generating, but you're not giving the money to the employees. You're giving it to the company, mm-hmm. which is feudalism because <laughs> you are then paying people to work for the people they work for, <laughs> which is, it's very confusing. And what? that makes, yes, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> I and don't it, know. it doesn't, I, I must say, it doesn't say <laughs> what places offered that. I don't believe that New York was one of them. So I don't think that's part yeah. of the deal. Um, but just just that it was offered shows kind of this desperation mm-hmm. to have Amazon come to different localities. And I guess that that like my question is why? Yeah. <laughs> like why yeah. why is there this desperation? New York, for example, has so much like there are so many different organizations and businesses that are central there and are are local there. Like why do they also need Amazon to be there? Mm-hmm. The most important, uh, you're right, Mary. Uh, so why? And that's because jobs, 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 right? We talked about this in our last episode. The The political economy that we live in is such that Republicans and Democrats and everyone salivates over the prospect of creating jobs. But you brought up the question earlier, Mary, of like what kind of jobs are being created. Mm-hmm. Amazon says that 50,000 jobs are being created. 50,000 full-time jobs are being created as With a result. Benefits? With benefits. These are being touted as higher paying jobs, management level positions. Yes. They, the Amazon says that the average annual compensation to these 50,000 jobs is more than a hundred thousand dollars in New York city alone. The That's 20, in 10 to 15 years, right? Yes. So. In, in the period of 10 to 15 years, because yeah. obviously you can't build the headquarters tomorrow. You know, mm-hmm. um, they're touting in New York city where they're building HQ two a they're touting that the 25,000 jobs that will be supposedly created by this new, corporation or this new headquarters they'll pay an average of $150,000. That's a lot of money. That's not all that much money for New York City. There's tons of wealthy mm-hmm. people in New York City, but you're not talking about the people who are working in 
any of the small bodega restaurants that corner stores, et cetera, you know, and if you go online and if you look at the requ- request or proposal, uh, Amazon says that most of the jobs will be high paying white collar jobs like accountants and, um, programmers and lawyers, uh, things like that. Mm-hmm. Not people who work in Amazon's warehouses. Well, I guess they're not building a warehouse. They're building right. a headquarters. And this kind of goes into the first point I want to make, which is um, if Amazon, which it, it sounds like it's going to happen, if Am- Amazon sets up headquarters in New York City, it will bring jobs because it will need, you know, obviously positions to be filled to run that headquarters. But Amazon also has a history of anti-competitive practices, anti-competitive business practices. And anywhere it sets up shop runs the risk of, of putting out smaller businesses uh, out of business through bankruptcy, which would obviously uh, constitute a loss of jobs. Uh, and not only that, um, Amazon has a history of increasing reliance on both uh, automation and algorithms that reduce the need for human employees. So when we talk about Amazon is just going to come in and bring all these jobs, it, it's not necessarily the case that's just going to be a net gain. Mm-hmm. And that's something we have to move away from in our economy, I think, where we just say jobs, and it's like, that's a good thing. Jobs equals plus sign. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. And the whole point is to break that down and think about it, is to think about what these economic practices mean. Why are jobs good? Like, I seriously mean that. Why do we want jobs? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Like, what all a job is is that someone agrees to pay you for your labor. There, there's no magical reason that we can't automatically create jobs all the time right now. The Chinese government does it. The Chinese government artificially creates meaningless jobs for its citizens so that they don't go unemployed. The, the Chinese government will like create jobs to have Chinese citizens go dig a ditch along a road for no reason other than they don't want unemployment because unemployment causes people to revolt against the government and the Chinese government doesn't want to be overthrown because it's authoritarian and run by the Communist Party. You know, So when we talk about jobs, like jobs don't mean anything at all. In theory, jobs are created to fill a social need, but that, that is simply not true. And so many jobs today are completely pointless and completely baseless. And that's the problem with the economy is that it's sick and unhealthy and the fundamental things running it uh, aren't working because of things like automation, because of um, lots of other factors like overpopulation, things like that. There's just not enough meaningful jobs that we have in society because we haven't figured out how to give people meaningful work. And so that's why there's people out there making arguments that we don't need jobs anymore. What we need is universal income for people because we don't need all the labor that's happening, the, the, such the meaningless labor that's happening. As a society, we could be putting all of our resources into automation, let's say, or something, and then we have less people work, and then they can do more things like the arts <clears throat> and research and development and innovation and sciences or whatever that don't need meaningless work like stocking store shelves to put commodities into people's hands. Yes. I mean, when I say that um, Amazon is increasingly pushing automation and, and then these algorithms, it's not like we're necessarily losing jobs that we want to have, but... At the same time, Amazon is maintaining this sort of stranglehold on the market, and because of that, it's making it much more difficult for smaller businesses and and innovation to happen. And that's really, I think, the true cost of all this. With with um, you know, with a with a healthier economy, with a healthier society, automation shouldn't be a problem. Technology has always outpaced jobs in in some ret- retrospect, but it also has created it too. So with a, a shifting society like this, uh, naturally the idea should be that as these jobs go away, newer ones, better ones, sh- should be sprouting up, but it doesn't seem to be happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> there's entire books written about what types of jobs are being created and how the economy is, is, is shipping. That, that's a very powerful point. And listeners, I do want to quickly remind you that You are listening to Evidence of Design on 100.9 FM. Thanks for tuning in. You can give us a call at 585-219-8889. We are talking about Amazon today, the corporation Amazon, not the rainforest. We're talking about Amazon and their announcement that they're moving their second headquarters to both. They're building a second headquarters in both Long Island City and Queens in New York City and also in Arlington, Virginia. The city of New York, well, I'm sorry, the state of New York and the city, a combination, Matt, you said it before, they're giving Amazon $3 billion in incentives, $3 billion in incentives to build HQ2 in Long Island City, $5 billion total uh, because $2 billion other come come from Virginia. 
Mm-hmm. Let's play a quick clip, though. This one is from Tucker Carlson, everyone's favorite Fox News host. They're so hard to choose between which one is your favorite. <laughs> Tucker Carlson's up there with uh, one of my favorites. Tucker Carlson, uh, let's hear what he has to say about a tweet from uh, House of Representatives-elect Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. This was on Tucker Carlson's show just a few days ago. Well, new Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had this to say today, quote, Amazon is a billion dollar company. The idea that it will receive hundreds of millions of dollars in tax breaks at a time when our subway is crumbling and our communities need more investment, not less, is extremely concerning to residents here. Hate to admit it, but Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has a very good point. Tucker Carlson just agreed with Ocasio-Cortez. Matt, did you hear that? I can scarcely believe it. Isn't that incredible? Wow. Yeah. So this is really interesting because... My favorite Fox News mop head is. <laughs> Matt, don't be... Yeah, you're okay. I like that. <laughs> I can't even go. Um, so this is really interesting because you have Andrew Cuomo and Bill de Blasio, the titular heads of the Democratic parties or the Democratic Party in New York State. Both of them tout themselves as progressive, and I think the American people, whatever you want to define that term as, see Cuomo and de Blasio as progressive leaders. They try to brand themselves as like leaders of the progressive movement in Cuomo America. Cuomo especially in the last election. Absolutely. He's saying he's the anti-Trump guy. New York is the progressive state. You have Cuomo and de Blasio who are celebrating Amazon's move to New York City. You have other <laughs> Democrats like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a self-proclaimed Democratic Socialist, who is not in favor of that move. And you just heard Tucker Carlson read a tweet by Ocasio-Cortez saying, all this tax breaks we're giving Amazon, why don't we spend it on, like, you know, schools, roads, and subways because those aren't being invested in. What you have here, which is so interesting to me, is that the far, the far economically right, the libertarians of the conservative party are agreeing with the democratic socialists. And we saw this same phenomenon in 2016 where you had voters stuck between Trump and Sanders. Mm-hmm. Trump is not a libertarian at all. He is a pure capitalist, but he, people thought him, thought of him as, uh, well, that, that's a longer story, but well, I think it's his mm-hmm. outsider status perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But this is so interesting to me. I was reading articles this week from the Heritage Foundation, from the Cato Institute, from uh, Conservative Affairs, and all those articles are being written, written by people saying that corporate welfare must end and this Amazon HQ subsidy thing is terrible. Those are being written by conservatives. I'm surprised. Yeah. Like like the Koch brother conservatives, libertarian conservatives, and the idea is that they want as free a market as possible and they see that government intervention at all is bad. Whereas the Demo- yes, <laughs> whereas the Democratic not where I was Socialist- hoping they were going with no, that. <laughs> yeah, they differ from the Democratic Socialists in that you know they want government intervention, just that government intervention shouldn't be going to subsidize corporations. But here's this interesting unity that's happening politically, where again the Democratic Party is split. We're seeing these fissures continue, and you have room for negotiation between uh, what you could define as the far right and the far left on economic issues. This is a, a big deal as a nation, and we need to figure this out where we stand economically because our two political parties aren't meeting the needs of our economic needs, and that's why there's so much strife, I think, in society because we don't have people, we don't have politicians to vote for that really represent the economic interests that we want to see. Yes, I agree. And so let's bring up another point then about Amazon and Matt, I think this is what you're going towards in terms of like, you know, just creating jobs isn't enough. There's a problem with Amazon that I think is also worth looking into as a structural critique of our economy. And that problem is how to articulate this. <laughs> the, the problem is that the internet has afforded us more democratic means through which we can participate in the social sphere and also the economic sphere. So if you want to become an entrepreneur, it's really easy to create an eBay an account and sell your good or service online, right? There you go. You're an entrepreneur. Uh, if you want to post something on social media, there you go. It's a democratic forum, so to speak. That's the argument that social right. media and the internet has democratized involvement. And there's more stuff than ever out there. And we know that the world is so there's so much noise. The problem and the interesting and the ironic point, though, about all this democratization is that we may, in fact, be going towards less and less things. So there's more and more stuff out there, but all of us collectively as a nation, as a people, are choosing less and less things to use, see, and use, or uh, to consume. Again, Amazon controls more than 50% of all e-commerce. That is one 
uh, website and corporation controlling all e-commerce. There's an argument out there that like the best sellers, more and more people are reading the same books, the same best sellers. Almost. Uh, for every two dollars that are spent online shopping, almost one of it is spent on Amazon. Mm-hmm. That is incredible. Yeah. In and September of 2016, it was reported that 55% of online shoppers in the U.S. begin their search on Amazon, as opposed to other websites, including search engines like Google. Yeah. 55%. And that's in uh, September 2016, where in uh, a year earlier in 2015, it was at 44%. So that number is potentially much higher now. Mm-hmm. And so we're struggling with this as a society of m- monopolized control of power. And... It's fun to have this debate, I think, about HQ2 and say, hmm, it was good or bad to move the headquarters here. I, that's not really the question. I think the question is, is it good or bad that Amazon is so... Exists, <laughs> as it does. <laughs> is it so big? Yeah. Like, is Amazon too big? And we've seen this with Cambridge Analytica and Facebook. Is Facebook too big? We've seen this with Google. You know, you just said that Amazon is taking over Google searches. That's a good thing, in a way, because everyone goes to Google for their first search, yeah. right? Besides Bing or Yahoo or whatever, like everyone goes to Google. So Google has a monopoly over <laughs> Google has a monopoly over the door that allows us to get into the internet. Yeah, you know. And I don't. And so the interesting thing is that the internet is democratizing involvement, but it's consolidating. So it's democratizing the entry points. It's, uh, it's democratizing the entry points and consolidating the exit points. And it's a it's a really interesting thing that I've been trying to think through, and I, I'm not sure I have the answer. Well, I think there's a, a useful analog in the changes that have been made to YouTube, for example, in the past few years, where when YouTube first started out, it was pretty much like uh, it was very open to almost anything. Like you could start a channel uh, playing video games or reviewing movies or mm-hmm. or just spouting your own political ideology or whatever. And there is still that still happens, but um, over the past couple of years, what we've seen is that YouTube has uh, significantly uh, s- introduced measures that um, end up putting most of the money that YouTube makes in a select few people. So it's much more difficult for somebody to start a YouTube career, for example, now than it was perhaps ten year, ten five, five or ten years ago. And what that means is that there's going to be less incentives for people to make more diverse and more interesting content. And we'll, we'll probably be seeing, you know, just a, a select few number of people continue on and continue to be profitable through this, um, through this venture. And the same idea happens with Amazon where you have this huge, you know, online storefront, but, uh, and, and the idea allegedly is to be able to connect people to, you know, stores all over the world, Amazon handles shipping. But what ends up happening is that Amazon pushes its own product. Mm-hmm. And eventually it'll just be Amazon's products. Right. I think that's their idea, though, is um, that Amazon doesn't necessarily want to take over the market. It wants to become be the, market. the market. Yeah. You know, um, and so Amazon, with the use of algorithms, for example, can control what its users see and uh, what what products come up in searches um, more readily. And sometimes it's their own products. Sometimes it's just products of companies that they have better agreements with. Um, and there are negative consequences for, for companies that don't agree with them. Um, there was one example, um, again, in this, in this interview with Stacey Mitchell regarding... Birkenstock, um, where Birkenstock's sort of way of existing is that um, they offer their full line to specialty stores. And what's Birkenstock? Uh, Birkenstock is a, is a sandal company, so they're um, it's a shoe company that's uh, based out of Germany. Um, where are Mary's from? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Angela Merkel. <laughs> the, uh, okay. Prime Minister there. Sorry, Mary. Uh, She's the chancellor. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> Philistine. <laughs> it's a different position. They do have a prime minister, and it's not. Her. Anyway, um, so Birkenstock is, is based out of Germany, and um, the way that they function is um, that 
They work with many different stores and on re- online retailers that uh, will have a select few of their products. And um, then they have deals with specialty stores where, you know, consumers will go in and get fitted and figure out what they what they want. And um, only these special store specialty stores have access to their full line. And Amazon um, basically threatened Birkenstock that if they didn't offer their full line, um, then they weren't going to continue to I thought they were going um, to flood Amazon with with counterfeit Birkenstock. Oh, they items. did that. Oh, yeah. yeah, there was that too. So that was an issue that Birkenstock had was that there were a lot of counterfeit Birkenstocks that Amazon wasn't doing anything about. Right. Um, and eventually Birkenstocks said, we're not going to do business with you anymore. And, and true Birkenstocks are not sold on Amazon. Um, which is a really interesting point because there are so many examples where companies have been threatened by Amazon that, you know, like if you don't, I, I don't, I, I don't know exactly, um, an example off the top of my head, but there are so many companies that have been, well, maybe Zappos that we mentioned yeah. earlier, um, another shoe company that was eventually bought out by Amazon because of the way that Amazon started, um, doing similar shipping methods and was selling their shoes at lower prices so they eventually um eventually bought out the company yeah and I, I think well one of the reasons why birkenstock was probably able to um to deny amazon in such a way is that it is a german-based company and and europe germany and the european union have much stronger antitrust laws uh as you said earlier mary mm-hmm. And so perhaps, you know, they stood to lose less than, uh, say, a U.S.-based company would by denying Amazon. But um, one of the things I wanted to bring up real quick was how uh, Amazon basically – I don't want to use this w- word because it has, like, warfare-like connotations. But Amazon weaponizes convenience. Um, so when you go on Amazon.com and you look for an item and you, you view it, there's a, a buy now option, you know, add to cart. And that option is directly linked to whoever is the default seller. Um, some of you might know, you can, there is an option to click on and look at other prices being offered by other sellers. But uh, research has shown that most people, a majority of people at least, just choose the buy now option. Um, in a ProPublica report back in 2016, They found that about three-quarters of the time, Amazon placed its own products and those of companies that pay for its services as the default purchase choice, even when there were substantially cheaper offers available from others. So if you have – I don't know how else to, like, properly sort of illustrate this, but that's so powerful to be able to do that and to be able to just, like, stamp out any sort of competition, if you can just, if so many people, if 55% or more people are just using Amazon solely for their online shopping and Amazon can control, you know, the buy now option, which a majority of those people are just using, like that is, I don't know how else to call that. I don't know how you can't see that as a monopoly. Mm-hmm. That happens with Facebook and their algorithms. We talked before with Cambridge Analytica that I was critiquing algorithms very heavily because algorithms are simply laws. Algorithms are hidden laws that describe that fundamentally define reality, right? Algorithms determine what happens in life, and it just, the company solution is always to create more algorithms. Like all you're doing is creating more ways through which things don't change or things change to your ends. So uh, Facebook has that with their algorithms. Google has that with their search algorithms. Amazon has that with their buying and selling algorithms. And yeah, they are really, really, really powerful, Matt. You can't understate that. And most importantly, we don't know what the what the algorithms are because we never see them. And even if we saw them, we're probably not smart enough to understand them because we don't code. And so it's behind all these different gatekeepers and walls. And I think it's another point where we're, again, democratizing inputs but consolidating outputs. And it, it's increasingly becoming a winner-take-all system in society. Which... I should remind listeners that you are not listening to a winner-take-all show right here. You know, out of all the radios out there, we are not being pushed by Amazon. We are not. Um, you know. I mean, I think if we were, we would probably be getting cut off now. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, um, 
Jeff Bezos would be a little sad with us. But thanks for tuning in, listeners, to 100.9 FM WXIR and a community radio station. Let's keep these community conversations happening, and that's the beauty of WXIR and things like it. Uh, in, a, in a world that is increasingly saturated with media that is just pushed more and more by really, really powerful interests, WXIR and other things, uh, other community and local radio stations are just such an asset because you define the content. And how you can do that is by contributing in a number of ways, like calling us at 585-219-8889. We are live here. We are not an Amazon robot or a drone, although that would be pretty cool to be a drone. <clears throat> I always wanted to fly. We found a tire swing in the woods uh, a week ago, and it was really cool to, to go on a tire swing. I was thinking of bees when you said drone. I was like, I've always wanted to work for a queen. <laughs> <laughs> you may soon have a chance. <laughs> That's right. And we bring back feudalism. <laughs> so, listeners, you can give us a call, 585-219-8889. What do you think about Amazon? What do you think about their new headquarters at the building in Long Island City in New York City and also Arlington, Virginia in D.C.? Are you worried about the concentration of power or do you just like not care and you really like the convenience that corporations like Amazon bring? Let us know what you think because there's no right answer here and we're curious. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I, I wanted to bring up real quick. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about how how so much of online shopping is done on Amazon.com now. And um, so, so one of the things, I guess... An argument you could make is that in order to combat this, businesses can sell through Amazon, and many of them do, as we've pointed out. Um, but again, it's been reported that Amazon actually collects data on all transactions that are done through its website. And oftentimes, it uses that data to then compete with the people that use its website. So it's kind of like creating this catch-22 situation where if you don't sell through Amazon, nobody will notice you. But if you sell through Amazon, Amazon will use that data to, dev to devise strategies to put you out of business. Um, and that's just another, I think, important point to bring up in how, how like, centralized Amazon's power is now in this market. That was a big piece about their RFP, the request for a proposal that Amazon brought out. This isn't widely reported, but think about the impact of all the data that Amazon got from the cities who wanted to uh, propose to Amazon that they built their headquarters there. Mm -hmm. Amazon received more than 230 proposals, detailed proposals from cities around this country with various incentive packages, with transportation, transportation data, infrastructure data, consumer data. Amazon has all of that now because of the RFP process. And we heard a clip from Andrew Cuomo, our governor, earlier saying, what Amazon was doing with this process isn't new, but they memorialized it. And I'm wondering if this is a new, new, where... Um, where big corporations will make these Olymp Olympic style public displays, yeah. and I'm I'm worried about that because yep, you get more and more data, and then their algorithms again use that data to reshape reality to their interests, not ours. And taxpayers aren't familiar with what is in that uh, information that was shared with Amazon. Yeah, I think that's a really important thing to know. Is like uh, we we mentioned a few of the incentives that that we are aware of in New York, but for so many of the incentives that were offered in those. Um, in those cities that, you know, were, were offering something, most local pa local taxpayers didn't know what their politicians had offered. Yeah. And I'm really bothered. You know, Bob Duffy, if you're listening, I'm calling you out on this here. Where I'm really bothered by Bob Duffy came out. He was our former mayor. He was lieutenant governor under Cuomo. And uh, now he's the leader of the Rochester Chamber of Commerce. I remember listening to Bob Duffy say why he wasn't telling Rochesterians what was in his proposal to Amazon. And he was like, well, we don't want to release that information because it's private. We don't want to give away all of our secrets. We're going to give it all away to the company. So, right? Yeah, like Bob Duffy, you just gave that away to Amazon. You are beholden to the taxpayers of this community. You not owe Amazon. us. Not Amazon. Right. You owe us to know what's in that proposal. And mm -hmm. guess what? Like, let us let us be fine with it, you know? Maybe I'm okay with you giving tax breaks to a corporation. That's fine. I just want to know about it. And that's what we should be striving for. Like, don't Transparency. Yeah, don't get behind this, this really... Um, really cowardly argument and say that you don't want to give it away because it's trade secrets. You just gave it away to Amazon, man, you know? And Amazon doesn't care anything about Rochester, which I, I do want to bring up a point really quick, and this is super important in the macroeconomic scale of our politics in America. Think about where Amazon just opened its two HQs. It wasn't in Rochester. It wasn't in Spokane, Washington. You know, it wasn't in Boise, Idaho. It was in the political and financial capitals of the planet. Yeah. It was in New York City, 
the financial capital of the world, and it was in Washington, D.C., the political capital of the world. And what I'm not a saying surprise. That. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, well, I'm so surprised that they chose those two locations right. out of all of the locations that were offered. Yes. I had the same reaction, Marion, but Jason, you actually said that you didn't think in a million years it would be New York City. No, I, I didn't think it would be a million years in New York City because it's already so developed that I just have a hard time picturing what it's like to create a bunch of new buildings, et cetera, in New York and have have all that more infrastructure there. Um, but I, but I'm worried about the development because what we increasingly see, see happen in society is that the coastal cities are beca- having more and more power and more and more influence and the heartlands of America are being left behind. And I'm a liberal and progressive dude and I don't really identify all that much with the, the culture of the liberal or of the heartlands of America. I, I have nothing against the culture. I just am more of a coastal culture myself. But I, I don't like the fact that more and more wealth and power and prestige and influence is being brought to the coasts. And this is not helping our politics, our Trumpian politics, with people in rural America feeling left behind by the elites, by whatever else they want to name it, with immigrants taking their jobs. When you have Amazon open up a new headquarters, creating 50,000 well-paying jobs, supposedly, in Washington, D.C. and New York City. Yes, but what happens is that this happens you know the elites amazon is the elite mm-hmm. amazon is the one taking influence but that anger gets redirected by people like trump on on people on immigrants yeah and, and no one's blaming big business you know that's the problem that's the point of the show is to start to re realign the critique to where it should be directed you know for all those people out there right now who who might identify with trumpian politics or feel like you're left behind and taken advantage of guess what you are being taken advantage of. <laughs> I, I'm being taken advantage of too. You know why? Because we're part of the 99%. You know, We have to sell our labor to increasingly big corporations. Don't blame it on immigrants. Don't blame it on race politics. Don't blame it on gender politics. Blame it on the fact that corporations have more and more power. And our politicians are increasingly beholden to their power, including so-called progressive leaders like Andrew Cuomo and Bill de Blasio. I think it might be worthwhile to just look briefly, um, I know we're getting to the end of our show, but at, at how um, things like Amazon and a mo- the movement away from face-to-face interactive shopping, um, how that affects communities. Um, we mentioned earlier that you know there are, there are more households in America that use Amazon Prime than vote, um, and that's a huge problem. That's a problem. <laughs> um, But just in terms of like where we live, um, what kinds of, I guess, what kinds of interactions do you have on a, on a daily level? Like I get up and I ride my bike to work if it's not snowing, um, and get to work and talk to people at work and then, uh, go home. And that's pretty much it. Um, but if I need to go to the grocery store, you know, I, I talk to people when mm-hmm. I'm at the grocery store. If I need to go um, to the post office to mail something, I, you know, bring it to the post office and talk to the person there. Um, and, and things like Amazon are making a lot of this kind of interaction unnecessary. Um, so if we need to buy groceries actually i think i don't know if we can buy groceries on amazon but i know yes. there are other sellers that where you whole can foods. whole foods oh true <laughs> <laughs> um so you can you know eliminate that face to face interaction and you can eliminate the face to face interaction of going to the post office because you can ship something they'll come pick it up and bring it to where you need it to go um and i think that is um convenient yeah but it's undermining what community is um and not only is it undermining what community is but all the money that we spend towards those things is not coming back into the community it's Mm -hmm. again going to that corporation um and that only increases disparity yep is only people who can afford it are going to do it and then the people who need those resources who need those post offices who need those grocery stores within walking distance are not able to access them which creates food deserts mm-hmm. and lack of communication. I think something else you're hitting on, um, Mary, is that there is like a, a, a tangible, if not maybe quantifiable loss when we give up like community interactions that we may have through shopping. Like I have at least 
two stores that I can think of at the top of my head where I love to shop for musical instruments because I know the people there and I have a rapport with them. And I derive, like, a level of, I don't know, like, fulfillment out of going to there and just checking in on the people who work there. And I can't get that from a website. No, and you also don't discover new things that way. So, like, when you go into that music store, for example, like, I'm sure by now those people know who you are and they know what kind of music you like. And they might have something that had come in recently, like a a new album where they're like, oh, Matt would really like this. Let's show it to him when he comes in. And they'll show you this new thing that you, if you were just going to buy something on Amazon, you wouldn't know to look for it. Um, And I I brought up earlier uh, the point of libraries being important in in that way. And that's a public service that is free. Um, And for the music store, you don't necessarily even have to buy anything. But those people are there because they're interested in music and they're interested in what you want. And maybe you'll buy something and that's great. You'll probably come back. Um, But then you'll expand what you know of music through these interactions as well. Well, I I think the counter argument to that though, Mary, I agree with you on principle is that algorithms are better at knowing us than we know ourselves. That's the argument with Cambridge Analytica Mm -hmm. where if, because Amazon has access to such data, they can create graphs and charts of, for example, Matt, you're consuming your music consuming behavior and then they can sell you products that you want. Yeah, they do try to do that. I mean, there, if you, um, I'm sure people have seen this. If you go on Amazon, for example, and you look at your product, it'll um, have a, a list of things that other people who bought this product also viewed. Mm. And that's just yeah. one one of their tricks that they try to use. But I, I mean, personally, I, I find that I, I'm much better at, at least right now, figuring out what I like without the help of algorithms. Mm-hmm. But, you know, who can say? I mean, they're, they're getting smarter all the time. It might be different in a few years. Mm-hmm. Um, admittedly, I have... Uh, found some new music for example you mentioned youtube earlier and i've gotten some music that i like through the algorithms but Mm -hmm. uh even still even still even still craig from the esquire just walked in the studio here gonna put on a good show coming up we on yes (laughs) i'll craig i'll hook you up with the mic next time but (laughs) thanks for walking in they put on a (laughs) they put on a great show so listeners stick around for them coming up next Thank you for being with us here at Evidence of Design at 100.9 FM WXAR. We spent this whole hour talking about Amazon, not the rainforest, but the corporation and the corporation that owns Whole Foods, the corporation that owns, well, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post, Kindle, Alexa, Echo, Twitch, Twitch, Cloud Saves, Cloud Saves, Blue Origin Space Company. Uh, they're very big corporations, and we as a society need to figure out what we're going to do uh, about these corporations as we go forward and bringing up what Mary said, a lot of great points too about the community and what we are giving up, not just with dollars and cents, but who we are and what it means to be a human. Mm -hmm. So thanks listeners. I was your host, Jason Taylor, joined by my most comparable hosts as well. Matt Treadwell. My hands are as dry as my wit. (laughs) And Mary Lawrence. (laughs) Thanks for having me again. Be well, be safe. Bye bye. We'll see you next week, perhaps with the holidays. Enjoy, yeah. Enjoy, folks, for uh, for Thanksgiving or whoever you want to celebrate it. Just find that time to be with your family or whoever you hold dear. And with I your hope 